Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well. Today, we have a lot to catch up on because I have some speed reviews. I think I have about 20 products. It might not be exact, but it's a lot of product here and I wanted to give you guys some updates. I've used this stuff either in Get Ready With Me's or just random videos throughout the last couple of months. And I feel like I have some pretty good, like solid thoughts on them. And I thought I would come back, let you know, do I feel like it was worth it? Do I feel like uh, it's trash? Do I feel like I would get my money back? Cause it just okay like just all of those thoughts from actual use so I hope you guys will enjoy I'm gonna try to keep it brief because it is a lot of stuff so I'm really gonna try to give you like the main points like is it good what does it do that type of stuff so I'm gonna start off with some stuff from Pat McGrath's holiday collection I ended up picking up three different pieces I didn't know how much I was gonna pick up I was super excited about this collection but so far I'm pretty happy with the things that I did actually buy and I don't plan on buying any more so first let's talk about these little five pan eyeshadow palettes I have the bronze bliss which is so beautiful this is like to me classic like smoky eye and this one is nude allure which has more of rosy tones to it and these are exactly what I expected them to be which is such a nice thing I feel like you know when you see makeup online and you're kind of like is it gonna work for me you look at it really hard you're really trying to decide and I'm happy to report that these are exactly what I expected these are shimmer heavy palettes they each have one matte in them that's kind of like the outer corner kind of grounding shade they both have like a light highlight type shade and then three kind of lid shades, however you want to do that. I'm trying to sit here and decide if I have one of these palettes that I prefer more. And I don't think it's that simple because I like both of them. I love the rosy tones in the Nude Allure. I love the matte that's in here as well. It's like a rosy brown, which are some of my favorites. And it's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. And the look that I did today was using this palette. So I put the Naked Bronze shade all over my eyes just with my finger. Then once I had that blended out I went in with the shade mahogany angel and just put that in the outer corner just add a little bit of depth and then for my inner corner I use the shade mercurial rose which I really do like as an inner corner it's quite bright all the shimmers in here are very soft they're not the special formula but they're a really beautiful shimmer formula all of them have a little bit more sparkle going on and I feel like you can build them up if you want them more opaque but they do kind of have that slightly shimmery texture if you want something a little bit more more sheared out I think they also look really pretty that way when it comes to the bronze bliss palette I really quite like this I did a smoky eye with this um, and really went for the drama and I really loved that look I was really inspired by the silver in here and I do feel like the silver in this palette specifically is quite special it's very creamy feeling it almost feels like a cream like it has liquid in it and you can get a high metallic shine on it or you could do it a little bit more sheared out if you want like whatever you want to do whatever drama you want to bring I feel like these palettes can give you that the sad thing is that these are gonna be limited edition and that makes me so like oh disappointed because I want these to be available like all of the time and I really hope that maybe in the future she comes out with some five pans like this I know she did that with those kind of like I don't know it almost looked like the eyeshadows were in sample cases do you guys remember those five pans um, I hope that she kind of brings something like that back because they're more affordable these were I believe $32 and I do think they're worth that price so if you can even snag them on a deal on top of that, I definitely think you're gonna love them. If you have a color story here that you like, these are good, these are really good. And I'm just sad when, you know, they're not gonna be available anymore. It's gonna break my little heart that other people can't get them. I said brief and I fucking lied. I lied straight to your faces. Who am I kidding myself, really? The last thing though that I picked up from Pat McGrath's holiday collection was the highlighter. I am obsessed with last year's highlighter. I've been using it all year. I've like worn quite a bit into the pan on this one. This is the shade Lunar Nude and so, so when I knew she was coming out with a highlighter this year, I was like, hell yeah, I'm jumping on that. And it was hard to tell from swatches how this was gonna look, but the outer packaging is quite cute. It's not gold like last year. I kind of like the gold a little bit better. It looks a little more luxe, even if the fingerprints are intense. The actual embossing or like stamp or whatever, the way the powder looks inside is beautiful. It's like this heart. I absolutely love it. Like it's bringing the vision, you know, I love that. But this is like, literally the same shade <laughs> like literally they are the same color so if you have last year's highlight you do not need this I'm telling you right now like just enjoy last year's keep making those dents keep using it and loving it and if you didn't get last year's you have the opportunity to get something very similar I did a short on the swatches for this so if you haven't seen that check it out where I swatch both and you can see how exact they really look if I had to say maybe this has a tiny bit more sparkle like maybe but I'm telling you they are so close it is like even with a micro 
microscope. We're really, you know, <laughs> it's the same shit. But I had a lot of comments in that short saying that this looks like it's gonna be too dark. And depending on how you use your highlighter or how light your skin is, maybe this would be a little bit dark, but I love this and I apply it with a more like fan brush like this and kind of do a sweeping motion on my cheek. So I'm not really highlighting, you know, really densely in a specific area. And I love this. Like I genuinely love this. It works for my skin tone. I also find though that this works best when you put a rosy tone blush or some type of blush underneath, maybe a blush heavy look. And so when the base comes out on this, because I feel like it almost has a bit of like almost a rose gold kind of undertone to it. There's something just slight, just very slightly rosy. I feel like it really complements that kind of look as well. So if you're struggling and you bought this, um, try that. But I love this. I definitely didn't need this one, but I had to know, like if this was different, I wanted it, you know? So if you're out there, you definitely don't need both, but I love this formula. It's different than the permanent line of highlighters or the highlighters that I've found in past blush palettes. This is more of that like high shine, it, it's just special. It's a special highlight. I really do love it. Continuing on, I have another holiday release here. This is from Charlotte Tilbury and it is the Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette. I have the one for fair to medium skin tones and I've really also been loving this. This is a very expensive product. I'm trying to remember prices. This highlighter is also expensive. If you can wait to get on a sale, I don't think it's gonna sell out maybe until then. So maybe you can snatch it on a deal because I got my first one for $30 instead of the 60. But this blush palette retails for $75. It's very expensive. This is my one blush palette pick. There's a lot of blush palettes that came out this year. Blush is definitely all the rage. And I decided to go with this one from Charlotte Tilbury and I'm very happy with the purchase that I've made. I love the colors that are in here today. I'm wearing the like hotter pink blush and I think it looks really good. I've been into a brighter blush, but it does have something a little more neutral. Although I found as I've been using this, that this also is quite pink. Like it looks more brown in the pan, but I'm telling you actually on, I find on my skin, it does have a bit more of a rosy pink tone than I expect. The highlighters in here are that really nice gel baked formula. I really love those as well. I thought that I would like like this gold one more, but I'm actually more gravitating to the blushy one. I really like the way it looks on top of blushes and the way it shines on the cheeks looks really great. I will say with this palette, I do find it best to use stiffer brushes or real hair brushes because like with the blushes specifically, I do find that, you know, it's just harder to pick up product on the brush. So if you're having trouble at home, I would definitely suggest that. I don't mind it and it gives you the chance to kind of build these colors up in a way and I, I find them going on really nice and not patchy and all of that but I do find that these are just pressed kind of hard and I need that stiffer brush and kind of working it in there to get it and I find when I use more soft brushes or synthetic brushes or even you know I'm trying not to get too many of my oils on these products because it almost creates a hard pan even though it's not so just a little warning on that I still love this palette I don't think it's a must-have again this is a limited edition product and I I really like it, but there are so many great single blushes out there, single highlighters out there, and you could still fork out quite a bit of money for each of those individually, like almost $40 a piece and it'd still be the same price as this. So if these colors aren't for you, that's something to keep in mind, but I'm still happy with it. I just wish it would be around, but it's not gonna be around. <laughs> and with that, let's talk about these Charlotte Tilbury pop shots. I really quite like these, but they're very expensive. These are $34 a piece. I know, like when I think of how much these three little compacts cost, it kind of blows my mind. I have the shade Smoky Quartz, which is a beautiful like taupey, minky gray with a warm undertone to it and lots of sparkle. I have Cosmic Rocks, which is a beautiful, like basically multi-chrome. It has a gray base and it flips from a teal green to a blue to a nice like warm purple. And then last I have the shade Rose Gold, which is probably the most like basic bitch color that I have out of all of them. But probably the one that I really, I don't know if I love it the most, but I. I do find myself reaching for this one quite a bit for just really simple looks when I don't know what I wanna do or I need to get out of the house fast. This one is very easy to use. I also brought this with me on vacation and it came in handy for sure. Now, I wanna talk a moment about the packaging because I absolutely love the way that these look and it's definitely a factor that draws me in and makes me really like these. I love single shadows and I have a huge collection of like pan single shadows. I'm getting more into like 
potted single shadows over the last like year, year and a half. And these just were right up my alley. I hate that these are limited edition. Here we go again. These are for holiday. And I really wish that these were part of the permanent collection. I just think they're so beautiful. And I think that it would be great for people to be able to get them all year round, have some time to decide what shade would be best for them. Then they can really enjoy it instead of it being on a timer like this. But for $34, I do think if these are something you're wanting or you're kind of interested in, but you don't want to spend that money, you don't have that money to spend. I don't think you have, these aren't a must have to me anyway. You can definitely find single shadows that are similar to these from indie brands, from other brands, from maybe even the drugstore, we'll get into it. I actually have some that I feel like are kind of similar. They'll be in a video Friday, so watch out for that. I know that's like annoying of me, but <laughs> watch the video Friday, I guess, but yeah. I feel like these are something I'm personally really happy with, but as like a suggestion or a must have where I'm raving about them, I don't know if I can quite do it. Like I want to, cause I think they're really pretty. And I think if you buy them and you see the swatches and you really think you're gonna love them and you can part with that $34, I think you will like them. And I think they're just like special little pieces of treasure in my collection. Like that's how I look at them. But yeah, I don't think I'm gonna pick up any more of them. Again, mostly because of the limited edition. If these were permanent, I might be more inclined to do that because I think it would be really fun. But the fact that these are going to go away and I have Mac singles from last year that were from the holiday collection. Again, so sparkly, so beautiful. And I love them. Like I want to keep them around in my collection. Again, I treasure them a lot, but the fact that no one can really get those again. And you know, it's just hard to, it's just hard to be excited about them when they're long gone. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not as like into just being like, only I can have them. I love that. I, I don't feel that way. And I feel like those two and a lot of the things I'm talking about that I wish were permanent, I feel like they don't necessarily have like a Christmas theme, a holiday theme or something like that. Whereas I'm thinking about the Odin's Eye palettes, which I am really excited to have. And I really like those. And I'm pretty sure I would have bought those as well. I did get them sent to me. Although those are limited edition and part of me hates that. I feel like it makes a little bit more sense given the theming of them and all of that. You know what I mean? But these are so perfect for the main line, you know? I am so sorry, you guys. I really lied. I really, really lied about being fast. Next, let's talk about what's on my lips. These are the Velvet Mousse lips lipsticks from Dose of Colors. I believe this is a new formula. They sent these out to me, all three of these colors, but there are more in this line. I could be mistaken though. When I was looking, I was like, I can't tell if these are a new formula or they're just sending these out to me right now. I have the shade Out of Office, which is what I'm wearing today. Day. The brighter, more orange one is called Fired Up. And then the shade Twin Flame is more of like a bright red that's not as blue based. I love the Dose of Colors liquid lipstick formula. You guys probably know that at this point, I have quite the collection and I was really excited to try these. I feel like Dose does really nice reds. I like the way my lips look today, but this is more of like a powdered soft looking formula. Think of a lot of the different like Hey Beauty products or the lip clays from Kaleidos. Even I think M Cosmetics has something kind of like this where it's a moussey formula that can give you that really soft, almost like velvet blurred lip. And I know that's really popular, but I don't particularly like that in this formula. I don't, I don't really love these. They are just very drying on my lips. I feel like all of the moisture has been sucked out of my lips and these don't dry down in a way that liquid lipsticks do. They don't transfer a ton, but I just don't feel like they're as long wearing and as like there as the liquid lipsticks. And that's one of the things I like about them if I'm gonna go with a bold color. And so I just feel like for how uncomfortable these make my lips feel, like I literally feel like my lips are shriveling up and like gonna turn into a pumice stone. It's definitely not my favorite feeling. So I would stick with the liquid lipsticks over these. If I wanted that like velvet powdered lip, then I would just do some eyeshadow or like there's just other products out there. I don't know, these just aren't my favorite, which makes me so sad to say but I do love the liquid lipsticks and that's what I would go for if you were wondering my thoughts. I do have a few more highlighter type products to update you guys on. So this is the One Size and a Disney Fantasia collaboration highlighter. It's the Bit of Magic Highlighter Illuminator. <laughs> I think that's what we call it. There was just one shade that came out and this one has the same thing as like the Huda blushes that came out earlier this year where there is like a design in the powder when you look at it in the mirror. In one way, it looks like just like cute little icons. And then when you have it a specific way, it looks like Mickey Mouse. I'll try to put a picture in of it so you guys can see. I think that's cute. You know, it's a cute little thing, but I was really excited for this highlighter and I do like it. This is one of those mid products though. I'm happy to have it. I knew that I wanted it. It was very 
very expensive I feel like like 30 something dollars <laughs> but I'm a highlighter girl like I I love the highlighters again this is gonna be limited edition so at some point you know it won't be available anymore which do I need to harp on that more and more do I <laughs> do I need to do that anymore just know that's like a complaint I have on like almost everything <laughs> except for specific collabs seriously anyway the formula on this one is very sparkly and to me it gives me that kind of like wet shine I went over top of what I was wearing today with it and I've been loving this for a really glossy look. It does have a bit of a deeper undertone. It's pretty similar actually to the Pat McGrath in tone and color, but this one is a lot more sparkly and a little less, I guess, like opaque or as smooth, even though that one still has a little tiny bit of sparkle as well, which gives this one that more wet shine look. So I've really enjoyed it. I like using it more with a like smaller, more pointed highlighter brush, even though it's a little bit darker because it's more sheer, I find it, it works fine and I like the way it buffs in a little bit more. I do have to be careful not to get too much. Like I don't want to make it too much of a stripe or too dark, but I feel like with how I do my blush, again, that kind of helps with any of that. Um, so I like it. I think it's good. If it was something you were looking out for, you might like it, but no, it's going to be a little bit more sparkly. And yeah, it's not one I regret and it's not like a obsessed with product. It's just right in the middle and I like it. It's pretty nice. Next, I don't know if I've really truly updated you on this Dior uh, compact. I, I think I made a video talking about it like saying I finally figured out how to finesse it and I just wanted to continue to update you on this I do like it more and more the longer I have it like the more I'm like okay I do like it my favorite shade is this one here which has more of that sparkly texture it's so interesting I used to really not like the sparkly highlighters but I've realized and I'm learning that I'm more into a sparkly highlight in a more neutral tone I really love using those products like right under my eye for some sparkle and drama like it looks so good to me and so that's how I use this. I'll just like tap my finger right there and add some shine right to basically where your crow's feet are. Like that's where I put it and I really love that look. I've used some of the other colors as well like on my eyes and I do find for like a fast face that can be nice. So I'm glad to be able to get more use out of this, get into it a little bit more. I feel like if I didn't have this massive collection, I would really quite like this and I would use it basically every day, but I have just so much and I do have a lot of other like highlighters that I like more than this, but it's creeping up like just slowly and surely it's becoming something I'm really enjoying so it's just taken <laughs> you know it wasn't love at first use some products are like that for me and then other products kind of need their time to simmer you know but I feel like that one's best also with a more dense brush where you're really gonna like put it on as opposed to like soft sweeping motions. This one's a bust for me personally. I, I was intrigued by this and it came in a set. So that's how this ended up with me. From Tower 28, this is the Bronzino Sun Coast like cream bronzer slash high. I mean, this is not gonna bronze and it's very shimmery. It's just a weird product first off. And I knew that going in, again, this was in a set that was like 40 bucks and it had a few products I was excited to try and a full size of the lip liner I was gonna repurchase. So I was like, let's, Let's try that. <laughs> I feel like in the smallest of doses for me, this can work for a more bronzed glowy look like on my cheekbones using it more like a highlighter as opposed to a bronzer because this does have a lot of shine not only in the actual product itself, but in the finish of it as well. It kind of leaves, depending on how much you use, the more you use, the more not sticky, but kind of this is gonna be on your cheeks. So I would use as little as possible, especially because I have oily skin, but the bronze color on this just shows up quite a bit on my cheeks so unless I'm going for that bronze goddess look it's just not exactly what I like if I want this I'd rather have a powder I guess you know if I'm going for that look I have some beautiful powders even that Shantikai powder that I bought earlier this year the highlighter that one is beautiful and I feel like a similar look but I feel like easier to control and I like the glow that that gives more than this one this one can make me look a little sweaty and I feel like it can also pick up on some of my texture like my pores and make those shine so yeah I'm not really into this product I find it kind of a weird one and I feel like it's very specific like if you know exactly what you're gonna do with it or this really works more as an actual highlighter for you depending on your skin tone maybe that's better but because this is just like slightly a little bit deeper like it's just it's hard to fit in so that's a bust to me personally I didn't I didn't really like this one I love the blushes from Tower 28 though I think those are really great and maybe over top of blush like I'm probably with all this stuff I'll probably keep trying it a little bit but yeah, I'm pretty much saying don't, I wouldn't get that. I would not suggest it. 
I wouldn't do it. I think this is the last highlighter product. This is from Rowan and I'm like wondering if I mentioned this in that same video talking about like how to finesse products, but I really quite like this. When I think of the cream highlighter products in my collection, I have a few standouts, but I have a lot in my collection. So I'm kind of like, hmm, I don't actually know about the rest of those, but this one is really beautiful. And I think it surprised me because it was one I wasn't sure I was gonna pick up from Rowan. This is the Row Glow Skin Stick and it's in the shade Glaze. There's also so another color as well. And this one worried me because it is so icy looking, but what's really great about this product is I feel like as you, you know, blend it in, it actually has this soft golden undertone to it. A little bit of warmth starts coming out. And I feel like that lets it look not as like frosty and maybe like unnatural on the skin, which I really, really love. I love just tapping this in. Sometimes I'll use the stick and just go straight in, but I tend to prefer just tapping it on. I feel like it adds such a beautiful glow one of those really effortless like chic kind of looks like it's really beautiful when I'm going for that kind of like you know the look the Rowan look you know it gives you the Rowan <laughs> look and I don't know if it's my low expectations I think I expected this to be more of like a Vaseline based kind of stick you know the highlighters that are like that where the shine isn't only coming from the particles but again more coming from the consistency the actual formula of the product this is not like that the shine is coming from the glow particles in here and although this has you know, it is a cream and it doesn't dry down to exactly a powder. I don't find it like sticky or heavy on my skin. It's usually just like a light amount of it. I think it looks really beautiful and I'm really happy with it. It's one of those products that makes me feel special when I use it. I love makeup like that. That's something I really treasure. So I've really been enjoying that Rowan highlighter. I'd love for Rowan to do some powder highlighters. Like I know they do creams, like I get it, but I would love some powder highlighters from Rowan. All right, let's now talk about some drugstore. I have some ColourPop stuff here I wanted to update you on. A while back I made a video talking about a huge haul I made on ColourPop that <laughs> like a lot of it was disappointing. And then actually from that video, ColourPop reached out. So they've sent me some stuff. And one of the things they sent me was the bronzer. This is the Super Shock Matte Bronzer. It's a more recent launch from them. I have the shade I'll Bet, which I believe is the second lightest shade. And I was really excited to try this because I actually like the Super Shock blushes quite a bit. The bronzer though, I'm not super happy with. I have just really great cream bronzer. Bronzers, so there's that and look at here I get a great little swatch But when you actually just go in with a brush on this you get a very light application and that might be something you really like But I just find it really hard to like pick this up on my brush like at all and I don't really love that like it's just not my favorite I think if you have really oily skin it might be a nice one though for you because it's a cream that isn't going to stay super emollient like whatever you actually get on your brush and you apply it's gonna go on I feel like pretty light and you can build that up if you want to but it's not gonna leave like a cream cream behind it's really gonna leave just the color pigment so maybe that would work for you in that way but I just like the elf putty bronzer better than this so I wouldn't reach for this I also don't really love the color it's just a little bit much it's definitely more bronze I wish it was a little bit less orange looking on me there's just a lot of competition with the cream bronzers that are out and I know that this is more affordable but it's not one that I would go with again I really like the elf one before I like this one and that one also I think would work great for oily skin I found it works great for me I do have some products from ColourPop that I've been enjoying though this is the blush sticks in the shade Roosevelt and I really have been enjoying this the color on it is quite beautiful this is an older product though I'm pretty sure this was in the like kind of last chance like it's gonna be gone forever so unfortunately I'm reviewing it and <laughs> you can't get it but this was available for a very long time before that it's a beautiful more brown toned like ruddy rose blush and I quite like it but I like to apply this more with a brush so I'll just take a brush this is the one I've been using with it the 108 from BK Beauty and I just like get it on there <laughs> and then we'll apply it in light motions on my cheeks. I feel like there's quite a bit of pigment. I can build this up quite a bit if I want to, and it's the type of blush color I do really enjoy. I can get down with like a lot of different blush colors. So um, this has been actually quite nice, but unfortunately it's gone. So yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes, isn't it? Anyway, and then last for ColourPop, I wanna talk about this brow pencil. I used to use these all of the time. Like when these first came out, this was the brow pencil I would use. I think they have two different brow pencils or they at least used to. This is the more waxy formula one and I have the shade taupe. I really love this color because it's like foolproof. Like I don't have to think when I use this. I don't have to worry. I'm going to overline and I mostly use brow pencils just to kind of finish out my tail or kind of correct anything. Today 
I went in with it uh, before I actually went in with brow gel and I like that look as well. I really wanted to show you how this color looks on its own and I really do like this. I just haven't had to buy a brow pencil in a while because I use the Rowan one because I get them so cheap on BoxyCharm. But if that wasn't available to me, I think this would be my next like brow pencil that I would just repurchase because they're quite affordable. And again, I really love the color. The formula is more that waxy formula as well, which is something I prefer. I don't want something too creamy or too pigmented in my brows because really I'm drawing on for color. <laughs> like I have hair, I just don't have the color. And I feel like this gives me that in an easy to use way. So really loving that. And I love the little spoolie on it. Like it's just a nice brow pencil. I think we're over halfway done. <laughs> I want to talk about a perfume actually in here. This was sent to me from Twisted Lily and it's the newest perfume from Juliet Has a Gun. This is called Ego Stratus. And if you haven't smelled Juliet Has a Gun, I feel like they have a very specific kind of DNA in their house. Like all their stuff is very musky or kind of like skin scents. One of their most popular perfumes is called Nada Perfume. And it's kind of like Glossier U-esque, you know, or any of those, again, no perfume perfumes where you just smell good or you kind of don't know what that smell is. Some people can't even smell it at all. And it just kind of becomes one with your skin. And I feel like that runs throughout the DNA of their line. And Ego Stratus is no exception to that kind of like musky base, but this has something a little bit fresher uh, going on, a little bit more clean smelling. So this has a lot of citrus notes in it. It also has some marine notes as well, which I feel like add to it being a little bit more clean smelling to me. But then there are some fruits as well. There's peach, there's blueberry in here. And then that base is very musky musky and woody. There's ambroxan, cedar, and musk in that base. So I was really intrigued on how this was going to smell based on like the citrus and sea notes, I guess, with the fruit notes. And the first time I sprayed this initially, you do get almost, I don't want to say bitter, but this like musky citrus smell that smells really clean and kind of fresh. There's neroli in here and you can smell that. But then I feel like as I was wearing it, for some reason it reminded me, and I do not know why, but it reminded me of Donna Born in Roma a little bit. It wasn't as creamy. It doesn't have like a vanilla bourbon note at all in it, but something about it was like the, the clean version of Donna Born in Roma to me for some reason. That was like some thoughts I was having, which I found really interesting because I love that perfume. And this doesn't really have those notes, but it was it was reminding me of it. It's like the clean version. I also kind of feel like this smells like the sea or like the oceany and clean again version of Fleur's Missing Person. If you've smelled that, like again, it has that like muskiness, but it goes more citrus. It almost smells too like it could be a hair product, but um, I've enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It's definitely not going to be for everyone, but if you like Juliet Has a Gun's DNA and you want something that's a little bit more citrus and fresh with hints of Fruit. The fruit in here is not adding any sweetness. There's no sweetness to this. But if you like pear ink or any of those, I would give it a sniff if you're into citrus. I think it's a solid release and quite a bit different from the rest of the ones in the line. Even things like uh, Moscow Mule, which is also kind of citrusy, that one's definitely different. So yeah, I think it's like a solid release and good for the right person if that sounds like your thing. Next is from Glowish. This is like an offshoot brand of Huda Beauty and this is the multi dew Skin Tint. I have the lightest shade fair and this is a very glowy slightly tinted product think charlotte tilbury flawless filter like that is the hollywood flawless filter it's their version of that and i find this to be just as glowy adds a little bit more coverage and i do think it gives this really beautiful like resort glow to your skin if you have dry skin i think it's going to be best for you because for me i find just throughout the day wearing it i do get a little bit more oily than i'd like and because all that shimmer um it looks beautiful like it's a beautiful nice shine but as my oils are coming through throughout the wear of my makeup I just find it's maybe not always the most flattering um, I don't dislike it I just you know it's just something to keep in mind I'll keep you updated with this Valentino primer but I definitely prefer the Valentino primer or something more like that because I just feel like I get the shine without like making my pores all big later on so I think this has a place for sure and if you're looking for something like the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter but for some reason we're looking at this instead I think it's gonna give you that and I do I really truly love the look of it on my skin with nothing on like I just imagine me at the beach like 
like, you know, going and getting like a nice drink on vacation. Like, oh, I picture it. It's the fantasy for sure. I'm still just working out the best way to wear this where I don't get as oily. And that's kind of the hard part for me. But overall, an okay product. Definitely not to me, though, a skin tint you're really wearing on its own unless you really love a glowy, glowy, glowy ass look. Like a really glowy look. This palette, unsuspecting winner, you guys. I really love this, even though I hate the outer packaging. I'm so sorry, but I do. I hate it. It doesn't match what's going on inside. Like, what do you imagine this palette to be? This is the half caked, pretty precious nine pigment palette. So you see all these jewels on the outside. Like, what do you think is going to be in there? You think it's going to be jewel toned or like poly pocket makeup? No, just the most beautiful, grungy, cool toned color store you ever imagined in your life. That's what's actually in here. So why is the outside like that? I don't know. If you're looking for just some really nice kind of like satiny metallic shades, beautiful one shadow looks in this palette. I am really into it and Half Caked is pretty affordable. I think this palette on its own retails for like 18, but I found this through BoxyCharm and actually the brand reached out to me. So I'm gonna be sent a few things. So I'll keep you updated with more of those, but I'm kind of interested in more of these like mid price brands. You know, with prices being so expensive now with inflation, all that stuff. I feel like some of those like higher end brands, like they're getting, they're getting very up there. Um, and I love drugstore, it can be fun, but those mid ones are kind of like, I don't know, little gems. And I, I just love this palette. I really love Sparkling Heart as a one shadow look. I also really love Pinky Swear as a one shadow look. And I like the formula on these. They don't seem like anything that special in the pan, I'm telling you. Like they just look like, okay, fine, like a nice shimmer, whatever. But on the eyes, they look more luxe to me. Like they look like one of those luxe formulas and kind of what I hope like the Tom Ford quads honestly are gonna be. Like I don't get the satisfaction from the actual like quads I have from Tom Ford. I quite like the duo, like the cream and powder duo like that I like, but the quads have been disappointing and I feel like this kind of gives me what I, I hoped that those would. So I really, really love the inside of this. Again, I just wish different packaging, like why? <laughs> That's the old, like that's the one flaw to me, the one flaw in this one. Speaking of shadows, I have two shadows from Half Magic Beauty and one of them I really quite like and I think you guys would enjoy if you were into these colors, I'm telling you. I'm talking about so many of these minky taupey colors. You don't need all of them, but I do find them beautiful. I need to do an updated video with more of the same color. I did this before. I'll leave that video linked down below where I talked about these like minky taupey browns that are cool tone, but kind of not like, oh, just so beautiful. Anyway, Wet Pebble from Half Magic. I just kept them in these little cases. You can pop them out and then they're magnetic. So I probably am gonna do that with them soon, but I kind of liked keeping them like individual so they don't get lost in my single shadow collection. Anyway, Wet Pebble is one of those minky browns and this has such high shine. This is very similar to me to like the Makeup Geek Foiled formula. So think that really creamy, really metallic formula, like so glam, so beautiful. I really like using a dense brush with these to really blend it out. And what I love about this color is that it's that same cool toned thing, but then it has like a warmer base. And I just, I love that. That's like my ideal. Like I like the cool tones, but I love when they have that tiny warmth coming through. Cause I feel like it makes them look a little less harsh and a little more natural on me while still giving me that kind of like grungy, sexy, moody attitude I'm looking for. You know what I mean? So I, I just love the wet pebble one. I'm so impressed by this. It does make me want to try out more from the line. I haven't tried any matte shades yet, but then the other one that I picked up is called Elven Things, and this is more of like a duochrome shadow. So it has a lime green kind of shine to it with a bit of like a pinkish base. Like it has a little bit of warmth in the base and it is really, it's pretty, you know, it's nice. It doesn't blow me away though. It's definitely not the same like rich creamy formula as Wet Pebble. So they're definitely different and it doesn't have too much sparkle. It almost reminds me of like a duo chromatic highlighter. That's just kind of like fine. Like, you know, it's nice. So this one is just okay. I personally, you know, if I could go back, probably wouldn't pick it up knowing what it is. Wet Pebble on the other hand, I, I love. And so it makes me interested to see what the other shimmers actually have to offer. Like, are they more like Wet Pebble? Are they more <laughs> like Elven things? I really want to know. But what pebble, again, like if you're just looking for that singular shadow, I think these retail for maybe $12 a piece. Really, really beautiful. I guess right now, just for me to compare it to Smoky Quartz, they are a bit different, but it could be a good dupe. I'm just saying, like if you don't want to spend the 34, but you're looking for something similar, this
this isn't as wet this is like a drier formula but it has like a really nice shine and pretty similar again with the base you know maybe i'll do a whole video like just duping these out let me know if you'd be interested in that okay the last two things we have to talk about these are cream eyeshadows so this first one here is from mac again we're talking about these taupey things <laughs> maybe i'm just doing that video already this is called vintage selection and i was really excited about this it's one of the paint pots but it's one that's actually pigmented not more like as a, a base to cover your eyes like darkness or veins or whatever kind of like discoloration you might have going on on your eyelids this one actually has more of like a pigment to it and again <laughs> i really was excited for this color and this is just okay i first off feel like this is a different formula than the paint pot i had now don't get me wrong i had the painterly paint pot from mac for like three over three years and i used it almost every day it took forever to use that motherfucker up okay <laughs> took so long so maybe it's more dried out and that's like the texture i'm remembering but this is a lot more slippy like it doesn't really dry down in the same way and i find that because it's so slippy the color on it um it doesn't really add like an opaque or even like shimmery color to my lids in the way that i expected it to instead i feel like the shimmer on it really like sprinkles out sparses out and it's pretty it's fine it's just not amazing and i just feel like some of the cream shadows from the drugstore i'm thinking like the maybelline color tattoos or whatever are better if you actually want the color pigmentation which is what i wanted you know so i'm not in love with this unfortunately like i really wanted to like it more again not the worst product it's not like something i won't use but i'm not like in love with it you know there's a lot of mid stuff in here here, I feel like. And the last two cream shadows, these are from Mally Beauty. I picked these up again through BoxyCharm and I just wanted to see what they were like. I feel like Mally Beauty, you know, is not really on my radar. So I was like, hell yeah, let's try these out. I have the shades Moonlight as well as Rosy Taupe. And I think they're fine. Like they're pretty nice. I don't mind them. If you find them on a sale, like they're pretty good cream shadows. I feel like Rosy Taupe is especially pretty. I like the way that that goes on my eyes. It's not as glittery or like shimmer part as moonlight is so I like that it's more of like a satin and I feel like that feels a little more high-end to me and again I like that light tint that it gives my lids it looks nice if I wanted to stop there I could but I like it as a base for shadows but they're not something I'm like recommending to you to go out and find I feel like the Laura Mercier ones are just as good I feel like the elf ones like they don't stand out as something so special among stick shadows but they're also not bad for stick shadows that's how I feel about them like they're just okay they're just mid like you know and I think it's okay for makeup to be that like it's okay for makeup to just be good there's so much out there and I'm so happy that so much makeup now is not like shit <laughs> because for a while like I feel like there were just a lot of bad products out there and nowadays like even for really inexpensive stuff like so much stuff is like at least workable and doable you could still turn out a look you know and so there's really like bad bad products out there and maybe I'm a little harsh I'm not gonna lie you know I really take my recommendations to you guys super seriously so when I'm saying like I love this like I want to be like I I love it you know especially when I'm coming back after really spending some time with some products so i hope these reviews were helpful i know this video must be long i really i really did at the beginning when i said i'm gonna keep it short and snappy like i meant it and i was delusional <laughs> and i was delusional in that moment wasn't i um anyway thank you guys so much for being here i hope you enjoyed the video let me know if you like these if you want me to keep doing these types of roundup videos every couple of months or so as i try new products and let you guys know what i think of them i plan on doing one with the sephora stuff that i'm picking up so that will be coming definitely probably in about a month or a couple weeks but yeah let me know what you guys think of these products or what you've picked up recently what are your reviews let us know down below and other than that i will see you in the next video bye guys